I like having fun. I like to laugh. I like to meet people who can make me laugh. I like having fun. Yes, I like to laugh. It's too late for that. Too late to stop now. Come on. Hey, everybody. Good morning. It's Monday. Monday, month, Monday, Monday. Who did it? Shana, Nana. So good to me. Monday, Monday. Who is it, Doug? Mom. Yeah, uh, the turtles. Here's the mamas and the mamas papas. And the papas. <laughs> good morning, everybody. A rare Monday show on this. Is this technically a holiday week? Not really, because you hit the Independence Day on the 4th is a Sunday. Is, I think next week is a holiday week. Let me welcome my guests. <laughs> uh, from Bleachers, the band Bleachers, Jack Antonoff is here. Jack? How's it going? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. What is happening with the... Uh, you, you got a whole st bunch of stuff coming up these days with music. You're producing mostly. Yeah. Um, who's your latest find? Who you've been working with now? For a while now. Uh. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I work with established artists as well. Like, I have new finds, but then there's established people. Taylor too. Swift? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, yes. Yeah, you did work with right. her. Produced her. I mean, you didn't like... Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool, man. Thanks. You going to stick around for the whole show or... Yeah. Cool, man. So Jack Antonoff is here. Um, Lana Del Rey, right? Yeah, <laughs> you don't, but I'm do you know who I'm talking and about? Bruce Springsteen. Oh, and Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, yeah. I did. Like what was that. working? What was working with him like? It was great. We just did. We did a duet. Are you? Are you wiping down your face? <laughs> I'm sweating. Yeah. <laughs> what rag is that? Glendale looks behind you. Whoa. Uh, no, Fred Armisen is here. What was it like working with Bruce Springsteen on that, Jack? Um. It was great, you know. We just scheduled it out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just worked on schedules and because he like must that. be busy. Yeah, and I'm, you're busy. I'm busy too. Right. We just scheduled it out and it, just figured it out. Was it like a a long thing or was it kind of quick and like a one day session Both. with him? Got it. Like a you know sort of. Let me welcome Vic Berger to the show. Good Vic Berger. Hey. Is here as well, and Doug Lucenhop. Doug is behind me. <laughs> Why are we doing a show on Monday? Can anyone tell me? I feel I feel like I've lost the plot on that. I just agreed, and I was told what to, I was told. This is what was going on today. What is the? You were going to have to do the show on Thursday by yourself. <laughs> Because I think Matt's even gone, right? You're even out. Uh, no, right? no. Oh, maybe not. It would have been well, me Doug, and Matt. And Fred, would, have, would you have been available on Thursday, or are you booked on Thursday? No, I would have been available on Thursday. So... It was because Doug and Vic would both have been away. That would have been okay. <laughs> Can we I do both? I figured you could replace I would do why Thursday why again. Why do you do Thursday again? Why not? Sure. I mean... We can just get any old trained monkey to press buttons on a laptop. <laughs> Well, I thought you could replace me with uh, Ricky Schroeder and then Vic. <laughs> could, uh, Sam Barsky. Feldman or, uh, yeah, Corey, Corey Feldman. Feldman? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Corey Feldman, Vicky. let's get to this Vicky. clip real quick. We're going to show some fun clips today. The boys have found some, some real diamonds in the rough. Now, ja uh, Jack, I'm going to call you uh, Fred. <laughs> ah, now I'm getting clips. Okay, this is good. Are you of the opinion yeah. that Corey Feldman is a good guitar player or a bad guitar player? What would be your guess on that? I assume you don't know. Well, I give anyone the benefit of the doubt. Like, So I don't know. My good. assumption is, is that he's really good. Okay, let's show the clip. Now, this is from a couple years ago. This is Corey Feldman. Hmm. Live from Feld Mansion. All right, we're going to do one more song. I'm going to play guitar on this one. Yeah, there we go. And Marco's going to play the violin. We like doing a little bit of this running around. Musical instruments, we call it. Okay. So this is a song also off my first album, Love Left, and it's called Walk, and it's about bad relationships. So we're going to leave you with this as a way to move on and walk if you're in that bad situation. Keep it going. LA Weekly, thank you for doing this. Facebook Live, 
and Corey's Angels. Here we go. How's that benefit of the doubt working for you? Bass now, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got a bass technique on his acoustic. Boom. Bass. He has a bass player. I wouldn't yeah. mix it. Been, been better. They, they should have stopped and tuned up, though, I think, too. Do you think they're out of tune? I do think they're out of tune. Pretty sure. You got music theory personally. I think they needed a mic, like a vocal mic. Right. Yeah. Because you're getting the room audio. Someone's asking if the angels are tuned now. <laughs> they don't look psyched to be there. Right? But they're, they're good musicians. They're playing well. The drummer is really good. They're okay. But I think he's. Violin's just... hitting all the right notes. Yeah. He's got one of those jumbo guitars, too. He's a he's a fairly yeah. normal sized man, I but he's got I one of those the, big the key would have been to get, mari mariachi band. To get like a little smaller guitar. Yeah. I have a feeling like he's so. It feels like he's, he's got. A, Weak. He's got like arthritis or something. He can't fully commit to put pushing down the strings or something. This is this is what I think. Turn it off. Sometimes in the rehearsal, it sounds fine in the <laughs> rehearsal, and then when you're actually taping, the whole band is yeah. going. Mm -hmm. It's everything gets overwhelmed. It's a mixing issue. You're hearing yeah. too much of the acoustic. Yeah. Let's take a, a zoomer. I would have said, my recommendation would have been smaller guitar maybe, or electric. There's no acoustics are weird. Acoustics guitars are just. I don't know if that would have helped. I mean, it feels maybe I, it, the action's yeah, too high. I feel like the action's too high yeah, on the acoustic. It's probably not a great guitar. <laughs> yeah. But I say a, a, just an electric, just like a Telecaster or something. All right. Well, we love Corey. Mm -hmm. He's a friend. Uh, and and <laughs> playing instruments isn't always easy. But, I mean, you know, I don't know that I would have killed it if I strapped on Let a guitar. Let me see if I could do better. Dun, 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 dun. But it was like a weird. What was the sound? Wrong note. A minor G. What's this? What is it? Probably C, A minor G. G. No, I think it's a faster turnaround. Dun, 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 No. Oh, really? Yeah. That quick? See? Yeah. Fred's right. Yeah. Or could he, he could have done this. <laughs> Better in a park than in Do the whole song. <laughs> whole song. Whole song. <laughs> whole song. <laughs> Let's take a zoomer on this Monday morning, June 28th, 2021. Glendale, California, where it is hot, 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 so hot, our guest is wearing <laughs> shorts, shorts that I got in Italy, which when was we were, where, where we, we were, were together. together, I didn't buy it, no, but this, the shorts you were, were not bought in my presence, I was long gone, but it was in, on that trip, right. oh dear. where did you buy them in Florence, yeah, it was so hot, and then I just saw a shop and just got them. Wait a minute. Let's talk what through this, hot. because were you wearing pants? Yeah. Jeans or pants? Black jeans. Black jeans. What happened to the black jeans when you got the shorts? But, so the shopping bag that I got. Got it. Uh, you don't, don't say no more. No, God, no. I'm say no more. <laughs> no, no, no. I get the, it. Listen, the bag that they provided me right. for <laughs> where I would usually have put the shorts. The shorts. I rolled up my jeans, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of rolled them up half. They almost look folded. And I... Uh, yeah, you put them in the bag. You, you get it. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> I got a question for you guys real quick. When you buy new shoes, do you, do you wear them out? I, tr I like to, actually. It's kind of fun to just wear them. 
Yeah, because your old shoes in the box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right out. But, I, but I do do that. I do do that. I did yeah. that last time. I, I do did. do that. All right. How about Scott Pauly? You know oh, what? Well, I have you know what shoeboxes oh, you have are good for? Ready? What yeah. old photos? That's uh, they fit right in there. Yeah. Huh? Oh, you put your old photos in sh- old shoe boxes? <laughs> Smart. <laughs> That's what my great grandfather did. I put old mementos, like uh, oh yeah, ticket little, stubs, little, and... little trinkets, yeah. little gifts. <laughs> They they go so good in shoe boxes. Who do you have, Matt? Jake. You got something? Oh, Jake, Jake Paul from <laughs> from the internet. Who's there? Jake. Oh, hi. That's actually my middle name. Jake Paul. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> hey. What is is it is it Jacob or is it Jake? Um, it's it's technically Jacob. You can call uh, me Jake. Yeah, I'll call you Jacob. It's great. Okay. We call you Cub. Um, that's a new one, but yeah, you could call me that. <laughs> why do you, why do Jacob's got to be Jake all the time? Can't they be Cobb? Yeah. Woo! All right, Actually, what do you have for me, Jake? Kobe. Kobe is a shortened form of Jacob. It's the same root. Really? Uh, is that Kobe Bryant's real name is, is Jacob? Uh, technically, I think it's, you know, derived from Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> you hey, man. You snoring, it's hey. our fault. Tim is just joking around, man. It's just goofing on you, dude. I don't fuck around. I like if, we, if somebody, <laughs> if somebody, somebody does something to say, I'm, I, I, fuck I fuck around. I go right to it. I, I go right around. to the name shit. You know what I mean? I don't fuck around. What do you have, Jake? Um, what do you I have? Really no, much. what kind of car do you have? That's my question. What do you have? When somebody <laughs> says, "What do you have?" <laughs> It means what kind of car do you have, right? You know that. Come on, man. No, what kind of car do you have? It's a simple question. Oh, my God. Next caller. <laughs> Welcome to What Do You Have? It's our new show. We just get people's cars. Jake, what do you got? Uh, there's a lot of celebrities. No, 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 no. What do you got is what kind of TV do you have? Samsung, Vizio, Vimeo, whatever. LG. LG, nice. Everyone's getting the LGs. I have one and I don't love it. Uh, wow. I know. Everyone's everyone's dunking on me. Listen, I don't fuck around. When I get I t- when I go to Circuit City, look but at the TVs. guy always says LG. <laughs> he always says LG. There's the bigger ones, medium sized ones. They're fucking, all big. Fucking Target is now doing LGs and Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> and walking to 7 Eleven. Hey, LG. Yeah, I mean. Okay. Hmm. I guess, oh, look, I just spent $30,000 at 7-Eleven. LG. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't fuck around. When it comes to, like, good TVs, yeah, it's no, no, always no, got to be Samsung. Around. Well, you know what LG stands for, right? No. Do you not? <laughs> <laughs> you just buy TVs. You're I like, know I don't it. Care. Life is good. I, I know this one. Life, life is, good. is good. They do the Where's shirts the I, and they dude? do the TVs. L-I-G, then. It's uh, not life is good. Jake, what, what do you have? What is it, Jake? Uh, it's Lucky Gold Star. Get out of town. Wow. Yeah. Was two Korean corporations that came together and made LG. Wow. Lucky gold star. Yeah. What's now you know? I have somebody, Jake. Uh any anything else? Um I don't think he got to his main thing. I know. I'm <laughs> I trying to get to, to it. Talk about LG. <laughs> Not a, yeah, I just got unmuted, but I can I can come <laughs> up with something. No, that's okay. <laughs> no pressure. I do see somebody with a go kart, Joe Kart. Can we talk to Joe Kart? Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Thanks, Cobb. Jake. Can you hear me? Thanks, Cobb. Yeah, Joe. Can you? Hear- are you? Hey, how's it going? What are you doing there? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Dude, are you at home? I've got, little, I've, got little, I've got a little game. I've got a little game for you guys. It's Good. All right, all right. Oh, I like this guy. Inquiries. It's the quiz show where I don't stop the vomit comment, so you got it. So I'm gonna keep spinning and asking you questions. <laughs> so you guys it, okay. <laughs> okay. Vomit comment. Let me know. Are you guys ready? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I didn't. I didn't eat today in preparation for this. So here we go. Did you get a going? I I want one of those. All right. What band released the 1993 smash hit Two Princes? Spin Doctors. Spin Doctors. Yeah. What hit political satire featured the likes of Michael J. Fox, Richard Pine, Charlie Sheen, Spin City, Heather Locke, Spin City, Fred Spin City. Yes, correct. Oh, they're all spin related. Oh oh my God, I'm getting real. Get real cautious. Uh, derogatory name for an unmarried woman is Spinster. Spinster. Yeah, shit. What leafy green vegetable belongs to the Spinach family? Yes. Two. Okay, it's my last one. It's a two-parter. You got to name the band and the song. 
I bet Bon Jovi would have liked to run away with this English pop group as they sung about rotating in a manner similar to vinyl LPs. Spin, Spin me, me round, 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 yeah. Spin me round, and who's that by? Oh, oh, dead or talk, alive. Dead or alive. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my shit. God. All right. Wow. Wow. You're wow. free. Where are you? Thank you. Thank you so much for getting... I don't want to... I don't want to say... I don't want OSHA to come get all... Oh, yeah, wait. Are, are you at work? Are you at Home Depot? <laughs> No, that's not Home I'm Depot. At, I'm at work right now. That's some other. That's like but a Dead or Alive didn't have spin in the answer. Oh yeah. Which one didn't? Dead or Alive. No, I was a two parter. So the band and the song. You guys, you guys got the song too. Oh, you spin okay. me right. You spin me. You spin me right. He yeah. never said that mm. spin was necessarily. Oh right. That we we, trying, we surmised that. We yeah. assumed that. You guys got it. You guys, what was a guys, What was a major guys, competitor to Rolling Stone magazine in the nineties? Spin magazine. Yes. Nice. Oh. Well, thanks for playing, guys. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you for uh, bringing some some heat to the show because I didn't have any, I don't have anything for today. I just lean in on Fred. I'm like, well, Fred's oh, yeah. coming it's in. Terrible. What do we have to worry about? What do we yeah. have to worry about? What do you got to worry um, about? Nothing. When a plane is uh, crashing and going in circles, tailspin. That's pretty good. What yeah. what DJ uh, did the beats for Salt and Pepper? Do spin, I need to spin Nailed yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Wow. Do I need to keep spinning again? <laughs> no. How about you spin until we we, get, we ask you questions? <laughs> about Garf. Nope. Go ahead. Who was the chef on the Nickelodeon show? <laughs> you can't do that on television. <laughs> <laughs> That's off the top remember. of your head, right? He's just barf. Doing barf. Barf. Right. barf. Yeah. Barf. Oh yeah, right. Barf. Anyway, um, but he was a terrible <laughs> cook. Barf. Yeah, apparently yeah, he wasn't he was, very good. Just made the worst food. <laughs> yeah. Right. Green slop. Got to be able to find a better uh, that chef. Was a, that was the wrong occupation for him. <laughs> no. uh, all right, who else, Matt? Anybody? Anybody creaming to get on? Well, let's see. Who do we got? <laughs> wow. Hmm. You're like one of our callers, Matt. I know. I How about know. Sari, Sari G? We haven't talked to her in a while. Sari. Sharp. Shari. Sar Shari. First of all, first of all, <laughs> no one wants to hear first of all. No, that's bad news. <laughs> first of all, oh God, here it comes. Yeah. What about the... Uh, it's more of like an, it's like an all due respect, with all due respect. Yeah. Due respect. First of all, <laughs> the rest of um, first of all, oh God. First, let's hear the first of all. First of all, what? First of all, I love the show. That's probably what you First of all, say. I want to apologize <laughs> You're like, oh, don't apologize. Because what are we going to do? Like, not accept it? Yeah. Okay. We accept your apology. <laughs> first of all, I want to. First of all, I want to apologize to Vic. I was too cruel to Vic about uh -huh. his Joel Hole reading skills. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I like that's that you came prepared with a. That's a whole now, it's a and it's like, it's, it's, so it's show. tight content. Fred, we did it's a. Uh, we're doing yeah. a series about Billy Joel. Uh -huh. And we're doing like a sort of a an education of Billy Joel, but also a discussion about his career. Okay. And Vic's the first episode. Vic kind of is sort of leading the charge on this, and uh, it was very. It was he read from like a doc. It was sort of like a book report about right. Billy Joel, and it was a little. Well, I don't want to get into it again. <laughs> you, I mean, you could go. Oh, did it get heated? Huh? No, it didn't get heated. It was just the was, reading was, was a little boring, like too boring for Tim, I think. And you know, I was trying to be factual about a lot of things I studied up for weeks. It's and like weeks. when you're hearing someone read from a piece of paper, sometimes it could be a little dry. Yeah, but what do you what do you want him to be? <laughs> right, I am really, uh, a better yeah, broadcast. Yeah, right. You know, you man, Billy me. Joel. When someone's when <laughs> someone's really good at it, that's it's yeah. worse. Well, what's your take right. on Billy Joel? Um, I think he uh, had like his own category but it's like what i don't know anyone else who was like him at the time you know what i mean like but he was like so many other artists in his like he he could sound like a lot of different artists. there was an artist like him I, i'm just thinking because it's piano eddie it's, rabbit, <laughs> but, eddie rabbit but he was guitar but there's something about like singer songwriter on piano oh, that's Elton. like yeah Elton. but that's like showman like right this is like Working man, person, I see what you're like saying, yeah. working man, per, man, yeah, personal kind of like uh, good looking personal, guy, good looking guy. So there's something <laughs> about that that like um, I and, think is is unlike also like that he didn't try hard to have like a style for every. I'm saying physically, right? Yeah, for every yeah. decade, like he kind of looked 
He would have looked so silly. Imagine uh, Billy dressed up like Elton. <laughs> <laughs> Like Randy Newman kind of was. Well, that, I mean, Randy Newman was kind of the, like the new romantic. Oh yeah, era. yeah, yeah. The template. Yeah. Sari, what's yeah, going but on Randy with you? Randy Newman was like more whimsical. No. Whimsical. Yeah. Yes, I think I'm right. Is that the guy Seinfeld didn't like? Seinfeld, Seinfeld didn't, didn't like, like Randy Newman. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. The, in the show or just oh in real gosh. life? You guys don't get that? I get it. Oh, Newman. Oh, oh, Newman. oh, oh we get it. Oh. He's like, hello, Newman. He's like all pissed off. <laughs> Sorry, what do you have for me today? Well, first of all, it's Shari. Thank you, Matt. What, do I, what, did, what did you say? My name is Shari. Shari. Yeah. Okay, but no, you I'm spell like... it S-A-R-I. Yeah. So add an H if you want me to say Shari. And I'll say it happily. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Salty. I don't fuck around. If somebody puts their name in front of me, <laughs> puts their name wow. in front of you, I'll say it how it's spelled. Jahan, like I see a guy named J O H N, Jahan. J O H N, Jahan. <laughs> Jahan. <gasps> okay, you, sorry, but. All right, so I'm so sorry, Shari. Thank you. Oh, wow. I never heard that. That's really good. Oh, yeah, been crazy. Easy. My entire life. You know who has my name? Jaja Gabor. Okay. That's the real name in Hungarian. Oh, is really? a Is Jaja. Okay. Okay, please. Wait, but is Jaja, is it spelled the same way as you? Or or that's her real name? Is is Her real name is Shari, S-A-R-I. Oh. Like mine. And so my nickname is Jaja. Boy, what oh. a B, huh? Uh, Jaja Gabor. What a B-I-T-C-H she was. She what? was nasty. What? Yelling at people. <laughs> Remember that? She was, yeah, she was yelling at the police officer. Yeah, yelling. Disrespectful to the law. Not a fan. Yeah, you you know, people yelling out out of their car window. Her and who was the uh, hotel woman? Um, Oh, yeah, the uh, Leona Helms. Leona Helms. Oh, my God, I forgot about her. Mean. She was the queen of mean. But she's so nice compared to so many mean people now. Like, right. there's so many more mean celebrities. Leona Who's the meanest? Hensley. Who's the meanest celebrity? It's got to be Jaja. Mr. T. Mr. Right? T's. <laughs> he's mean. Oh, he's pitying he's all these fools. fools. <laughs> well, it's no, but it takes some kind of. He it takes some kind of compassion to pity someone. It's Rocky, so that's... Rocky was mean punching people. <laughs> Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Shari, uh, did you want to yeah. talk about something? Me and Gene uh, was pretty mean. Mm-hmm. I'm, trying to, I'm just amazed that the you Hulk? remember. I feel like I'm an old, old person. Old, what do you call it? I'm a regular, but I don't know what I'm a regular for. So, well, I you had find- a good story. I remember you because you had a great story that we won't what? talk. We won't say. We won't get into the the weeds of. But your right. story was your life story was memorable to me. Oh well, except for my name. Okay. <laughs> what? I'm going to walk you know off. No. Never done that before. <laughs> I have actually. <laughs> yes, Let's not have that happen again. How my pits? We sweaty. So you know what? What we missed was that I have the same birthday as you, or you have the same birthday as me, February third. Uh, Happy birthday! Anything? Happy birthday, man! Yeah, Happy, Happy birthday! birthday. 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 <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy and I tried birthday. to call in because yeah. I was going to give you advice because I was turning 60 and I was getting old. And I thought you could ask me questions about being old and I would help. Well, let's save that for my 46th birthday coming up in uh, okay. February. It's almost, it's probably my half birthday. Did you think? That's August Vic. 3rd, yep. When is my I half have... birthday? August. August. Flawless victory. <laughs> I'm sorry. What else have I got for you? I'm so sorry. Um, Vic, anything for Fred? With... Got a big guest here, Fred Armisen, star of Saturday Night Live. Oh, I'm bored. <laughs> my big thing. Hi, Fred. Hey. I slept with Nick Cave. What's that? I slept with Nick Cave. Oh, great. He, what, she you what? slept with, slept Nick, with Nick Cave? Nick Cave. He's what? a legend. He's a legend. <laughs> wow. Was this in Australia wow. or here? Here. Wow. Did he have uh, Did he have bad seed? <laughs> Ew. Ew, but it was my birthday. I've done it again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't want to hear anything more about this, Nick. Let's let's not t- tell tales out of school here. Why it was it's not the that only kind of show. thing I've ever 
done, but I did just so that I could talk about it. There's no reason to yeah, be that's except a, to tell else, people. Yeah, I, and you said it in a respectful way. I thought so. We were sleeping. I don't know what else. Who's do- was there a dog? Sex. Yeah. Yeah. She's oh, got your a dog. dog over there. Well, yeah, it's my dog pound. I slept with that uh, the violin player in the bed. So he's Warren Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> Warren Ellis. Remember when, remember when Johnny Carson did that joke? Yeah. I slept with the violin player. <laughs> in the, I, was, uh, I was like, what is this? You hear this? Uh, Nick Cave? No. I was like, the, what a deep uh, cut. Bad Why? seeds. And the uh, bad, se- bad seeds, Ed? I slept with the... Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dark, yeah. dark yeah. band. Dig Lazarus Dig, they said. Mm. Oh, my God. We've been canceled. I slept with the violin player. <laughs> the uh, violin player. Is that the whole joke? Seeds. That's it. That's my whole joke. Yeah. I, well, I, I love Johnny the Carson. only thing I could think of was that you, I, you first called on me Warren and I was Ellis. telling you dream about. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. Good morning. Do not phone. know. Do not know the bad seeds, <laughs> sir. <laughs> <laughs> let love, li- what is it? Let love in? Originally on their birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> Carson riffing on <laughs> Nick Cave. Okay. <laughs> the uh, <clears throat> boat, boatman's call. The boatman's call. Huh? Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? My guest is uh, great Nick Cave. <laughs> what would Johnny make a Nick Cave? That's uh, some. I like him. I like him. Great band. <laughs> Funny stuff. <laughs> Funny stuff. Dark stuff. <laughs> <sighs> Something uh, terrible happened to your son? Is that what happened? Oh. Oh. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Mm. All right, Shari. Thank you. Where are you? You're up in the Northwest? I'm in Wisconsin, just uh, outside. I was hoping to outside get somebody of, to talk uh, about that heat wave. Outside of where? <laughs> outside of Red Wing, Minnesota. Ah. Present. Outside of Red Wing, Minnesota, I think Greg Norton has a restaurant in Red Wing. I just saw him. Who's Greg Norton? Is he in the bad seats? He was in Husker Du. He's the oh. bass player of Husker Du. And <laughs> Husker I think he du. opened a restaurant in Husker Red Wing. Husker Du, apparently, is uh, coming out with a new album these days. Husker Du. I, I saw Bob Mould. I saw. <laughs> I saw du. Greg at Target about a week ago. You hear this, folks? You uh, saw him a week ago? Are you friends with him? Yeah. yeah. He's great. They're yeah, he is. It's one of my it's favorite uh, bands. I can't ever get into Husker Du. Oh, God, I love uh, them. Send me a so list. Much. Love Husker What do you think about Sugar? I wouldn't believe it. Love like, he's, he had uh, the Meat Puppets play at his restaurant, and there was, like, no one there, no one who the, they were. It was just, like, a favor. Like, um, there was no one there. It was just the Meat Puppets and, like, five people who knew who they were. It was so cool. But, like, wow. he's got kids now. He He sort of had this, like, midlife dropped everything and got this really cute little wife and has two kids and now he works in a factory third shift and he says he's never been happier which guy is this the Here bass player working Greg, in Greg a so is he not doesn't he have a restaurant anymore nope wow nope he his restaurant oh it's a long long story call okay. me later if you want right. to hear it all hello food fan it's not the guy with the mustache yeah it's a mustache hello fan. food fan oh, okay. <laughs> He's very nice. He's like... Uh, he seems like it. I think he's kind of dumb. <laughs> what? All right. You uh, just said sorry. it on TV. Oh That's not nice. You just said it on TV oh in Come front on. of everybody. Oh, sorry. You're in trouble. <laughs> sorry, oh, oh. you're canceled. That's okay. I never got canceled. to see Greg Norton. Yeah. Restaurant Red Was it Shame. Husker Du? I like her. Oh, oh, you're sure. like... Um, Gossip. Yeah. I know. Shari's cool gossip, gossip about yeah. the irrelevant old uh, 80s dumb dumb post punk band. He's very dumb. <laughs> <laughs> the Nick Cave bombshell was. Nick Cave, the bad seeds. <laughs> oh, she's still, she's still, she's she's still, still, still going. going. Wait till TMZ gets a load of this yeah. episode. Yeah. Warren <laughs> Ellis. <laughs> Warren Ellis, violin player. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is it? You know what's funny? There's another guy named Warren Ellis who's like a cartoonist. You know about this guy? This I don't know. He's like a uh, 
he's a British comic book writer who's now uh, been Me Too'd. So poor Warren Ellis, the other Warren Ellis, has got to be like, not, I'm I not that wanna, Warren. I just want to play my violin. I'm not that Warren Ellis. You know, this Warren Ellis is a, there's, there's two of them now. Two Warren Ellis is, wow. All right. I got <laughs> uh, what else? You Matt, do you want to show some? You want a city of the day? What do you want? Well, you know what I want to bring up because you mentioned, I, th I don't think we were on the air for this. You mentioned rock critics. Yeah. And being befuddled by them. Yeah, just like why write a bad review of an album? Why write a bad? We were talking about Ram, the le seminal album from Paul McCartney, was panned by critics when it came out. Just awful. Yeah, why, like, what's the just, point of that? Like people hated it. Yeah. Well, not people didn't hate it, but cr rock critics yeah. hated it. Uh, this clip I found from uh, the Lemon Twigs, you know the, the group, the Lemon Twigs? Mm -hmm. They posted this clip of Art Garfunkel. Uh -huh. um, as he was asked about rock critics. Let's see what he has to say about rock critics. What? What was your reaction when some critics, and the songs sold well, so it isn't as if uh, this was an across-the-board reaction, but some critics said, uh, on his own, Art Garfunkel is too syrupy. It's too sweet. <laughs> What's my reaction? Yeah, what was your reaction, <laughs> then or now? Where do these writers come from? That's my reaction. Um, if only girls wrote the reviews instead of boys, I'd be so much happier. That's my reaction. Males tend to be more literary conscious. Females tend to be more viscerally musical conscious. I think my, the nature of my appeal falls in that latter category. That's my reaction to those reviewers. That's not where I expected uh, this to go. Furthermore, furthermore, now I'll uh -oh. drop my defensiveness uh -oh. and say, I think they're onto something a little bit. Bette Midler once beat me up over the notion of you're, in, you're more intelligent than the songs you sing. Why don't you get the lyric content up to where you lyric actually content. are? And my answer would be, well, how many James Taylor, Randy Newman, Paul Simons are there? There's a, just a handful of poetic, intelligent writers. What do people... <laughs> oh, God, that was such a long answer. <laughs> He's simmering with rage. Yeah. Isn't that a weird thing? question to ask, though? It like, is a weird question. What do you say yeah, when, right. when critics yeah. say you suck? Yeah. What, what was your reaction? What's your reaction? Right. What do you want me to say? I know, that is a weird Oh, question. it's fine. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's helpful. <laughs> I find it very helpful and constructive. I don't know how to read. Yeah, because... But uh, the, once he started going into the boys and girls thing, I think he's like, uh, boy, yeah, yeah. how do I get out of this? <laughs> I got to backtrack on this now. He's going to have to compose a letter to Paul, uh, Paul Simon apologizing. Yeah. Paul, I, I hope this finds you well. I have some terrible news to report. Too syrupy. Um, <laughs> a, a, a bit, upon speaking with Bob Costas, I said some, some, uh, some <laughs> language I, I regret. I hope this does not affect you in a negative way. Sincerely, Art. Please call me. Um... Wait, wasn't he complimenting Paul Simon there as being like he, he was? Can't be as is he good saying as, his solo stuff was? He's like he, he can't be as good as yeah. Paul Simon. Right. That's kind of interesting. You know? Did you see that review of IHOP of International House of Pain? No. <laughs> Too, Too syrupy. syrupy. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a that's like a that's like a yeah. Doug that's a Doug joke. That's a Johnny Carson joke. You see this, folks? <laughs> you see about this? A little weird. <laughs> You're reviewing. Now they're our, reviewing. Our, uh, our <laughs> 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 ha ha. Uh, how about, um, who else, Matt? Diego Ayala. Diego. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Oh, my God, it's so, it's so weird to be talking to you. I'm a first-time caller. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. I hit the jackpot. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, um, hit, you got one of three things. You got the ceiling fan, the guitar, or a record collection. And you have the guitar. I only have a uh, guitar and a little record collection, but it's too It's got to gotta be in frame. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Paris, actually, but I'm from uh, Venezuela. Like, what the Venezolano. <laughs> You're yeah. in Paris right now? Yeah. Maron. Texas? Maron. <laughs> you know that, Fred, actually, you're kind of like a minor celebrity in Venezuela because... I'm Venezuelan. Yo soy Venezolano. Yeah, yeah. Mi mamá es de allí. Eh, eh, de, oh, my God. De Carrizales. Oh, my God. That's so weird. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. Um, Were you recognized actually, at all in Italy? No, that's that's I my that's so. oh, I was getting to that, Tim, actually, oh, you because were. I have a weird story in Italy involving Fred. Yeah. 
Is it, a, is it a respectful story? It's not going to embarrass It's super him? respectful. It's okay. super respectful. <laughs> um, I went there with a friend from high school, actually, and we were both, like, super obsessed when we were teens with your character in Eurotrip. Oh, yeah, yeah. With, uh, I mean, <laughs> okay. the movie guy. Yeah, yeah. Because we were teenagers. Yeah. And, well, like, we People of all ages could become obsessed with The guy that. in the train? Know. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Love that guy. And we were there in Rome, and... All the time, we were like, mi scusi, mi scusi. And all of a sudden, man, it was so weird. You were right there. <laughs> what? Like, you were standing at an ATM, like, doing the line for, to, like, get some money. And we <laughs> asked for a picture. And, and it was, like, the one of the most... You like, said, the fuck off. Was, I, yeah, was, was I friendly, though? Did we take a picture? You were super, super friendly. And then we felt bad because... As soon as we asked for a picture, everybody started like coming, and you had to leave. And I think that you, you couldn't you get your mobbed. money. The paparazzi <laughs> you got <up>. mobbed <laughs> in Rome. Yeah, I was working there for a while. Was it like Zoolander Two? Zoolander maybe? Two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I saw it in theaters later, and I was like, oh my god, it must. Have yeah, been. that was there for yeah, a while. Rome was really cool. Yeah, it's a great city. Me and uh, Tim were just in Italy for a while. Yeah, that's why I found it so weird too. <laughs> How do you like yeah. Paris? I love it here. Yeah, it's really cool. So what do it's, you do there? I, I do music. I do you play in the Pixies? I didn't play in the Pixies, but if they're Wait a down, minute. What do you mean you do music kind of professionally? Like the guitarist. Oh, yeah, it oh, yeah. does. Um, yeah, I do film score. I'm studying film score here in the, well, wait in the Paris Hold on. Conservatory. Two different things here. You're studying film score or you're doing film score? Uh, a little bit of both, actually. Ooh. Okay. All right. Okay. What are you, Bernard <laughs> Herman? It's the only film. Are you a le- are you a lefty? I'm a I'm sadly I'm a I'm a lefty. Yeah. I'm a lefty. There's no sadly about that. That's... You're a lefty, but you play. I play traditional okay. guitar correctly. Yeah, I play. Yeah. As but there's some real I, genius I lefties a... around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, um, I actually regret not learning it the other way around. But um, Paul what? McCartney. No, Paul McCartney does lefty. Yeah, Paul McCartney does lefty. Well, it's bright out in Paris. Are you sure you're there? I can play bass. I can show you. Can you? <laughs> I'm actually quite good on bass. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you find that? <laughs> Are you convinced? <laughs> no, guys. Fred, do you f- feel comfortable sharing um, the home you visited? The home I visited? Yeah. In England? No. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. <laughs> Private. Yeah. Mental institution. <laughs> uh, all right. Paris, France. Ready? Let's see the uh, Eiffel Tower out your window. Come on. <laughs> you can actually see it. No way. I swear. What? See, I know. I can you tell can the way the light's coming it. in. I can tell where he is. In... Oh, look at that. Wow. wow. Oh, Wait, I can't see the Eiffel Tower. Oh, it's just a little, like... I don't know. If you, like, like, what if it's, it's super far fallout? away? I can see it back there. It's one of those things in the on the it's spires. Right? Yeah. yeah. Sticks. Okay. There okay. All any, right, buddy. This is a pretty chill. <laughs> I think anybody yeah. could do that. Anyone could just like put a like, <laughs> "Hey, you see it? If, <laughs> if you move it enough, <laughs> you'll find it. Yeah, your eye will see yeah. it." We were staying uh, in Italy. We were staying twenty minutes from the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and you could look out the hotel window and see the yeah. damn tower. Okay. And it was just like... It was like a famous <laughs> building. It was so it was weird so how weird. famous it was. Yeah, it was like is. you just would see that on a pizza box since yeah. you were like two years old. Yeah. There it was, sticking up like an idiot. Okay. One of the great flubs in history. That, Big what a mistake. Miss. <laughs> Big, huge mistake. They Did didn't you fuck go up. in it? Can you go in there? Dude, I don't fuck around. I, I, I yeah, don't. you can. There were people up in there. Like, and you're, like, it's just not going to fall it. over. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Okay. One bonding thing Fred and I have was we discovered our mutual fear of heights yeah. on this trip. I didn't realize well, you suffer from the same yeah. affliction. We both went by this bridge, and we almost <laughs> went up. We're like, I'm afraid of heights. I can't go. And then Tim said, This exactly little bridge, thing. by the way, it was this little like medieval bridge that went kind of. Uh, it was it was kind of high enough for <clears throat> boats to pass under it, but it wasn't ter- terribly high. But the ledge of it what was like it's too low. The top mm-hmm. of it was like below yeah. your hips. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Mm-hmm. I don't like Like that. maybe at your hips. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it was like, no way am I getting up there. Little, our knees were shaking. Yeah. 
Two guys not going up on the <laughs> Two <moon>. adult <laughs> men. Too scared. Look, too scared to, to walk over a bridge. We jumped into each other's arms like what, <laughs> what if we? What if we had to like? What if we had to get over the other side? <laughs> like, oh, that if, would be awful. I would be on my hands and knees. I, mean, I seriously I would. would. I would get on my hands I, and knees and crawl like a dog. That's the only way to get across. <laughs> <laughs> my teeth chattering. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going that way. <laughs> 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 Wait, so you just didn't go over the bridge at no. all? Or did you, you did didn't not. like, you just stand on one side. And close your eyes or? <laughs> Closing your eyes would be worse. You just worse. walk you just right, right over the edge. The <laughs> no! <laughs> Splash. You'd probably live if you fell off that bridge. It wasn't that high. Yeah, yeah. you just break a bone or something. I'll send you, Matt, I'm going to send you a picture of the bridge so that you could look at it privately. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Uh, and that will be the rest of our show as I look for the picture. So if you guys want to talk on your own, oh, here it is. I'll show you this bridge. Is it the one I took? Yeah. Wait a minute. Send it to the right people. Come on. Why can't you just... There it is. <laughs> All right. Show that bridge, Matt. Are you ready? Photo by, photo by me, right? Yeah. But I think you have to really show, you got to zoom, do a zoom in on that. Yeah. Look at that. Can you zoom into the people up on top of that bridge, Matt? See? Oh, that, okay. That is kind of scary. I see. Yeah, yeah. You see? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 There's a scariness to it. Great hat, though. <laughs> um, okay. How about uh, we talk to somebody else? Talk to bricks. <laughs> I feel like I have an opportunity now, which is rare on office hours, is to say, how was your weekend? <laughs> how was your weekend? That's always such a dead question, isn't it? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> right away, like, what do I have to recount my weekend? Well, did you how do your, anything how's your special? Weekend? How's your time off? You unpacked. Where did you fly? How did you fly back? Did you fly through um, Frankfurt or? Uh, no, through Paris. Through Paris. Yeah, where our friend just was. Yeah. And did you fly back with uh, Trisha? Yeah. How was that? Great. She's lovely. She's so cool. We got one of the people in this in this movie, Trisha Helfer. Yeah. Who was on a, one of my favorite shows of all time. Yeah, Battlestar Galactica. Battlestar Galactica. She was the Thanks. blonde, like, and uh, what's what are they called? Cylons. Cylons. Yeah. Fuck. She was evil. But not really. But she kind of would like appear, disappear. It was like yeah, she's like in like the imagination in of imagination. Yeah. yeah, but she was really cool. And Fred and I were like nerds at Comic Con with her. Totally talking, talking about her. So like you were like yeah, uh, in episode nineteen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but she was very nice. Yeah. My daughter was uh, amazed that you were hanging with Debbie Ryan. She, uh, really? She would have been yes. Yeah, she was like, what? Is that, is what? That? I showed her picture. That's the silence from like, the original. Yeah. Although, I want to send you guys this. Speaking of funny clips, I love that show. I think I said this, sent this to you, Fred. The uh, like clip of Adama here. from Battlestar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, I'm going to send this to Matt. <laughs> this show got so dark and heavy. It really did. It got emotional. But, it's yeah, it's, very, it's a very emo show if you haven't seen it. Uh, Matt, I'm sending this to you. We could watch that later, but... Yeah, Dama used to cry all the time. Jed Edward James almost yeah. used to break down in tears because things were bad on that ship. Thing, you didn't know if you were gonna the, the entire human race was gonna get wiped out, right? That must have been a stressful ship to be on. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was danger. Yeah, they're like, can we just drive the ship across space and just enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> You don't understand. <laughs> if we don't do this now, <laughs> now this way, yeah. it's it for yeah. everyone. But I think we should do it that way. Yeah. What about this way? And who's we, that? That's a silent. No, I didn't know that. I didn't. How am I supposed to know? We got to get off this ship. <laughs> we have to find a planet to live on. Imagine trying to find a planet to live on. That sucks. Nightmare. <laughs> I would. Ch I would have checked out so quick. I would have been suicide pill right away. I would have been like, "Can we have Can't. one day? One day of <laughs> without no red one, alerts." Without, because they would always get attacked. Yeah. yeah. This, this is the thing on that show. Sorry to spoil it. They would be like, they'd jump, which yeah. meant like they would all, as a fleet, they'd all go doop, 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 yeah, doop, yeah, and disappear yeah. and show up like 
and they'd be like ch like uh, running from the Cylons. Mm. And then so they'd get to this new place and they'd be like, all right, let's check, see if there's any Cylons. All right, let's start looking for a new planet. And then they're like, we've detected Cylon Raiders. We're get they're coming in. Oh, right, we have to jump now. We have to jump now. <laughs> they're always jumping. <laughs> so stressful. And so Matt, play this clip. <laughs> Can you play it? This is like, this is pretty deep into the show, but. <laughs> Watch this, guys. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> was that Dick Cheney I saw there? Wow. Dick Cheney wasn't on the show, Doug. <laughs> this looks like I'm my age. Yeah, I know. There he is. It's not Dick Cheney. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> I want to do this scene shot for shot. <laughs> oh my god. No, don't drink. Oh. Don't drink. <laughs> it's the last thing. When you're that mad, that's the last thing don't, you should do. Yeah. <laughs> and then on the ground. Drink so bad that you have to be carried around. My son guy. <sighs> it's his son. <laughs> And you're saying the show is good? Yeah. <laughs> you got... That was a heavy work day. No <laughs> what he did on New Caprica. I think he was directing too. I... Edward James Holmes. What happened to his <laughs> All right, cut. All right. Let's Have you guys ever had to carry someone? <laughs> <laughs> or drag someone? I've never had to do that. No. I don't think I've ever uh -huh. done that. Hey, Kay Loggins. Can we talk to Kay Loggins, daughter of Kenny Loggins? Kay? Okay, Loggins. Hi. How's it going, guys? Good. Good Where are you calling you from? Hello. New York City, baby. Hey, oh, New York is back. Right, <laughs> New, York is, is, New York is back. It so is chaos. We're opening right up. Now. Broadway's Why? back. Why is it chaos? Just outside the people, the places, inside, outside, everyone's, there's a, there's a wild energy. Everyone is in town from LA and just, uh, you know, what do you mean everyone's in about town their from LA? and talking about the energy here. So is everybody wearing masks? Uh, half and half, I'd say. I, just Depending to get this out there, are. please tell everyone in New York, six feet apart, please. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. I keep seeing on the news <laughs> that they're not six feet apart. Because they show people in the street. I'm like, six feet apart. You know what I We're do? We're begging you. I have... I mean, people um, are in bars, like, packed right now in New York. I have these two... I have actually two, four, six, eight, eight yardsticks. That's so for, the way to go. On each side of me, I have two yardsticks. That's six feet. Yeah. And I connect them here, and they're out off to my front and back. Yeah. It's a, it's a buffer. Yeah. In the hospitals, you know, as people came in with COVID, they're just like, how close are we to someone else? And they when they admit... It was three feet or two feet. Yeah, out. Out. No, they don't fuck around. Hospital. They don't fuck around. Kay, how are you today? I'm good. Um, last time I was on, I was mortified because I feel like I made Doug sad with the whole um, Kiss from a Rose drama with Vera that we both made to cover. But we connected after the show and um, we exchanged the different versions. And I guess they're both in the film, so it was a good. It was a good moment. Um, great everything works out <laughs> anyway so I, okay I have I have either like a funny music related like video clip recommendation thing you can look up or I have like an activity game kind of thing what's an activity game like coloring okay we give us so something I was thinking about my favorite <laughs> I was thinking about my favorite uh, one of my favorite bits you've done on um, on the show which is Roger Daltrey um going to the bank to, to get his bank account set up. And, uh, you know, I know, I know you, you were singing like, you know, Oh, right. I my got account it. number five, oh. four, six, seven, three. Yeah. And, I walked into uh, the like, logo bank. Yeah. 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 He, he always so, talks like that. Yeah. So, and he and woke I, up in a doorway, right? Yeah. So yeah. for a chicken account. <laughs> my uh, number was nine, 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 three. So I really Stupid. think there's some potential there. And I know you have like a healthy competition with the network late night shows and, you know, Fallon has that, you know, musical impressions, but I just think, you know, front men, um, you know, just doing running errands, you know, you can just pick, spin the wheel and pick, you know, like, um, 
Dave Matthews, it goes to Subway. Uh, Hello, can I get an empty cheese, please? <laughs> with an onion, maybe a pickle on there for me. I'm going to sell it out. Good for the heavens. I won't sell it. I won't let us on tomato. All right. <laughs> yeah. That's true. So you can just you can just think of those all day and go and go on, you know. And I think that's just that's some comedy gold, you know. Well, why don't you give us some combos? You know. Uh, try it. You could do um, uh, uh, Getty Lee. Getty Lee's at the parent teacher conference. What is? Can I chip in? Is that Getty can Lee? I, I can't really do Getty Lee. What does he sound like? I don't know we Getty Lee. He's like up high, but not falsetto. Uh, my is it like, kid is at the school. Is it like uh, Rush? Is he got like in that range? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Range? He is Rush. 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 Oh, Getty Lee. I'm. Th- yeah, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> what other Gettys are there? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I'm what, do they of... ta- what do they talk about in Paris? I was thinking, you know what happened in my head when Close she said Getty Lee? The... I thought she was talking about. Um, Lemmy first. In my mind just oh. went to Lemmy. Jesus, He's like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you want Getty Lee at a parent teacher's conference? Yes. My children are looking <laughs> for answers. <laughs> That's it. You nailed it. It's not, it's not high enough. That's about right, actually. What about. I this was is, trying this to... is David Byrne at uh, Target. I'd like some towels. <laughs> <laughs> different shapes. Different shapes and different towels? colors. <laughs> I want. He also does that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I, 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 I want some towels. Towels. I want some towels. Wait. How about uh, Joe Walsh went to the tailor and he dropped his, his stuff off at the tailor and he comes to pick it up and there's like a problem with one of the hems. Like it's sort of <laughs> sort of quite a specification. What is Joe Walsh like? I think, I think I'm talking. I want my link. I want my tailor to do the right thing. No. Is that my Maserati? Yeah, that's the guy. My Maserati. My Maserati. Uh-huh. We're not, we're not going to give him that. No. <laughs> We're not going, we don't go back. But it gets you into it. It gets you into it. Yeah, that's good. Here's my challenge. My Armani. My Armani, maybe. My Armani. You got him. But we can't just do like (laughs) Weird Al. We're not Weird Al. My Armani is is hemmed a little short. Yeah, but. Well, why can't we do Weird Al? (laughs) Here's my challenge. Were two words that Elvis Costello would sing together. Like what would be two words that he would sing together? Like mine would be um, critic, critical infection, <laughs> yeah, a critical yeah. infection, <laughs> right, Vic? Oh God, I'm not good on the spot. Um, Temporary. Like the, um, you can just do one word. How about dictionary sewer? <laughs> dictionary sewer. <laughs> <laughs> Complicated <laughs> physics. <laughs> Plasticine. It was always saying, do you want it? Sometimes he goes in, (laughs) do you want it? (laughs) Ask. (laughs) The real like jumps in in rain. (laughs) Do you want to go? Or like, uh, (laughs) do the round of me, me. (laughs) That would be one. In the Bible, (laughs) you want to do the round of me. (laughs) Do the round of me. That's a good. (laughs) So good. In the Bible, J- Joseph in the Bible, do the right of me. <laughs> so good. What was I listening to American Girl last on the radio yesterday from Tom Petty? And he wrote, ra- yeah. <laughs> he's almost got like a Bob Dylan, yeah. Thing there. But he was like, uh, he said, balcony, <laughs> he did balcony, <laughs> anyways. One more, go ahead. You got one more for us. Oh, um, I mean, Tom Petty. Well, <laughs> uh, Hello, are you watching our show or are you on, are you watching another show too? Because we were just no, doing Tom Petty. <laughs> yes. I only had a couple of plans. Tom, Tom Petty's buying a, a used car. Wait, what? Is, how about Bob Dylan doing a used car? Bob Dylan's buying a used car in Craigslist and it's like a, you meet him up in person kind of thing. <laughs> it's just it's hacky. Yeah. Hacky is good though. Then yeah, I was buying a car. See you have me. to think late night. This, you gotta be in the late night mindset. You got a shitty. Yeah. 
You got a Chevy. We're Hello, my name audience. is Bob. I'm here for the Chevy. Because <laughs> they're meeting like in a People are clicking away area. from the show in droves, <laughs> canceling, canceling their subscriptions. Well, should we get serious for a moment with EJ and talk about July 4th? Okay. Our, our scheduled guest. Thank you, Kay. Bye. Thank you. EJ. Every guest begins with K. Pastabilities. EJ That's is good. That was Pastabilities. I've been missing that. I've been eating at Olive Garden. Having some pasta made. We're having some pasta made. That would be good. Come on. You get it. You get the pecorino cheese. No. You think Costello and Newman, Randy Newman, are kind of similar with their vocal? Yeah. Yeah, it's that same. Same. That's a, it's a reason like a lot of people don't like them. It's a reason I don't like neither of them. Hey. You know what? Oh, hey. no. I would, Without due respect. But you know what I can't do? That Costello thing I can't do is his vibrato. He does that. Yeah. Like, Penny Lane is in my heart. <laughs> in my He does like a real. The whole classical phase. Yeah. Through. All right. Who's my guest? EJ from Non Compete. I, I wrote you some questions in the doc. Oh, <laughs> don't. Matt, how dare you? What are you, the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain? <laughs> Hello, EJ. Are you there? Hello, Tim. How are you? Uh oh. I don't like anybody that, that has that oh tone. My God. Hello. I was I was trying to do the I was trying to do the wavery thing, but I'm, oh, okay. I'm not, I just woke up, so I, I apologize. Uh, uh, it's very very nice to talk to you. I had this guy when we were long time ago. Doug, you probably remember who this guy is. I don't want to say his name. I don't even, I don't think I know his name. But he was an intern, and he was the kind of guy that you'd see him in the bathroom, and he'd go, hello. Oh, boy. <laughs> Comedy guy. <laughs> hello, sir. Like, what is that? Just... Chrysler Christ, was telling me about a guy who used to do this to him. <laughs> oh, I, I do throw the thumbs up sometimes. I Dude, guilty. I don't fuck around. I'm, I don't know. I, I might be that hi. person. I'm sorry. I, I don't fuck around. I just... I... Wait, hello. That's like a family guy style. Hello. Of talking, right? Yeah, it is that. It is hello. that. Hello. Stewie. <laughs> Do it. I Did remember you? the time we don't want to. <laughs> uh, uh, don't want to put on okay, EJ from Non Compete. Yes, sir. You yeah, have a I... YouTube channel that covers Fred. Listen to this: intersectionalism, liberation, anarchism, and communism. Oh wow! This guy's the Fun real stuff. deal. That's serious. Um, we, uh, we invited yeah, Monk. We, we also do like puppet July shows, 4th, and uh, we can. I am that comedy. I am that. Try hard comedy guy, I guess. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's a uh, uh, we yeah. Basically, we we talk about uh, a lot of the stuff that you talk about on your show. Uh, I actually consider you to be sort of anarchistic with office hours. It's one of the reasons I love it. You know, you bring on, said love. you bring the audience into the into the mix. You you try to break down those hierarchies, break down those barriers, and uh, and you you know you try to stick it to the man. So um, I feel like we're kind of doing the same work in in different ways. But yeah, so let um, me let me set this up for you because. Sure. I went to the Dodgers baseball game yesterday, and I stood and removed my hat and sang the national anthem. Am I a bad guy? <laughs> I like doing that kind Not of at stuff. All. <laughs> I, it, it feels good, right? It yeah. feels great. I know um, it's I, pointless I, and silly, but can we? Can you? Can you hold those two things at the same time? I cannot anymore, mm. and, I, and I'll tell you why. The, so, like the last time I was in the USA, I went to Philadelphia for the first time, and I. You know, I used to be a huge patriot growing up. I was really big into the USA all the way. Wait a second. Um, where, where you know, are I was in now? high school during September 11th. Sorry. I mean, I live in Vietnam now. I've been here for about 10 years. Um, yeah, he's yeah, a traitor. So, uh, <laughs> you know, folks, <laughs> yeah. the phone lines what? are open to patriots. You sound like my dad. Um, but, no yeah, I stood in the... <laughs> Vietnam is I so in hip. The spot where... It's a very hip... Pl- when people want to talk about traveling, like, you know when they mention someplace cool, that's what they say. Yeah. Actually, Vietnam is probably... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's extra cool now because people haven't really been dying of COVID at all. We've only had 76 deaths out of 97 million people here because they're actually taking it seriously. Um, so it, it's a it's a great it's been a great place to be through the pandemic. I haven't actually been in the USA since the pan- before the pandemic. Um, yeah, but they're they're doing they're doing a great job here putting you know human lives before profits. That's one of the things we talk about uh, on on the show a lot. But um, which, yeah, like it's like. We're under lockdown right now because they take things so seriously. There hasn't actually been a case for like a couple of weeks here in, in Danang, but um, 
still everyone's wearing masks, social distancing. It's, it's like everyone's taking it very seriously. But for like most of this pandemic, I haven't had to wear a mask. I've been able to go to restaurants and it's because they've really just completely contained it. So mm. it's a totally different strategy than the USA where they were just like waiting to make a vaccine. So, um, okay. So let's talk about July 4th and why, what a scam <laughs> yeah. it is, what a fraud, what a fraudulent holiday is and what your issues it's, are. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a falsely advertised, I would say. Um, yeah, like I said, when I was in Philadelphia for the first time, I stood in the spot where Benjamin Franklin, his, his, his slave house was. And I remember sitting there and just thinking like, okay, this is where, and it was like really close to like a, a, a little like display about how great Benjamin Franklin was. And I remembered back to like in school when you're growing up and you're learning about this stuff and they, there's so much cognitive dissonance when you're learning it as like a child, cause they'd be like, oh yeah, all these, all these founding fathers, they, they all, you know, they either owned slaves or they were willing to comp- compromise with people who owned, you know other human beings. Uh, and then when we talked about Ben Franklin, they would always present it like, Oh, Ben Franklin, he's, he was so like progressive and he, and he, uh, he, he let his slaves go free in 1781. That was like such a cool thing to do. And it's like, that's kind of the bare minimum lowest bar I could think of for like a human being to not, you know, <laughs> right. I mean, it's like freeing your slaves is not something to really be. And there was no question uh, at the time that slavery was a terrible thing. It wasn't, you didn't have to be some kind of highly educated, uh, you know, uh, saint to understand that. Yeah, I mean, it, it had been. Where were you on in, slavery? You know, the <laughs> like historical. Like, where are you on? <laughs> where are you on? Anti? Are you, are you for it? You against it? <laughs> but the funny thing is, the slavery, the justification arguments they used were tied in with Marxism too, uh, because like they were very aware of the risk of like the work, you know, class consciousness picking up and people having a, a revolution, and so they had this mudsill theory. I don't want to get too in the weeds of it, but um, the idea is basically that this, they needed to have slaves in the South because, according to them, every society had to have like this mud still, this lower level of people, and um, they just thought it was like better to have slaves than in the North where they had workers who would like eventually have a communist revolution. So like, right. they were very aware of like class dynamics and all that stuff. It, it was, uh, but they don't really tell that story. You know, that, that basically we have this narrative we tell. That's kind of the main point of, of what I wanted to talk about today was like we have this narrative about the Fourth of July. And it doesn't want line and the USA, you know, in general, the whole story of the USA, it's just a story, you know, but it's not, has, it doesn't line up with what actually happened and, and the reality at all. So that's why I kind of gave up my, uh, my, my personal patriotism for, for the USA, but I could definitely understand why people get into it. Cause it feels really good. It gives you that kind of, I just like you know, USA, we've kind of, it's tough. It's a tough song. It's got a, you gotta, you gotta have some range for that one. What for um, the national, national anthem? anthem? Yeah, I like it on its own. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Aside from the, its <laughs> yeah. relation to you know Country. patriotism, like as a song. Yeah, it's on a few playlists. Yeah, I just put it on. <laughs> I like the melody. What were you gonna say? <laughs> just uh, with fireworks in general, like oh, people, please, please be <laughs> safe with fireworks. Thank you. Please. <laughs> please. <laughs> I'm asking you. I'm telling you. Around. It's the law. I, I don't law. fuck around. I don't, I don't even. Around. I don't even fucking play with them. I don't even put them up my ass or anything like that. Like, <laughs> I just like I hate literally that. watch yeah, I hate them. That. You know what I mean? Also, there's like, there's a time and a place for them. So if you want to go to see them in in Disneyland, professionally or whatever, yeah. done. Yeah. But otherwise, don't do it yourself. No. No. You always have that one cousin that wants go to like watch shoot them. the Roman candles at you. Yeah. You know. Um, it's, nev- it's never fun. I don't recommend it. Mm-mm. So yes, there's a there's obviously obviously I mean this is an a, a, this is an enlightened audience I think most most like most I, I people think so. have read the the Howard Zinn history of the United States right that that's a good place to I, start yeah, right I, yeah sure I mean yeah I mean uh, yeah I don't I don't I, I don't want to be preaching to the choir you know um, but the, the the main point I would say is just I, I just uh, encourage other people to kind of really go back and think about when you were in school growing up and the things that were like taught. Cause, cause in the USA, we are, I feel like I dropped the tone of the show and I apologize for that. But like, but in the USA, no, it's, um, we have, it's a, it's a yeah. dynamic show. <laughs> it is. That's what I love about Sorry, it. Sorry. You, um, you interrupted the, uh, the very important task of us trying to sound like other singers. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's really important it's got work. Its place. Um, but we're indoctrinated, you know, in the USA, we, we, we like to think we're not, and we like to think that our politics are like common sense and that we don't have ideology in the USA anymore. We're in this like Tony Blair post ideology world, but we are heavily indoctrinated. So I guess, you know, one of the things about anarchism is going back and, and questioning all the hierarchies that exist in our society. It's actually the main thing about, you know, anarchism, 
Um, and just going back and looking at like, okay, so what were we taught growing up? Why were we taught those things? Like, is it serving somebody's agenda? It's just kind of like basic media literacy, just kind of like dissecting and, and interrogating your own relationship with, with the state, <laughs> you know, with the United States of America. Let's have um, one, I have one, question, one quick yeah. th thing to think about. <laughs> I want us all to think mm -hmm. about this. And then an, another more specific question, but you have 1776, right? We all know 1776. Mm -hmm. Great the signing musical. of the Declaration of Independence, the Revolutionary War is like, basically we're in the middle of the revolution. It doesn't really, Revolutionary War starts like 1775, right? It's more or less. More or less. Something, <laughs> like that, something yeah. in there. <laughs> and then when does it wrap up? Like a couple years after 1776? Not too, it's not super long. I thought it was well, a, they, a while. I think it was in the 1780s. Uh, they signed, they did the Constitution Convention in like 1787. In the 1780s. It, this is my question though. Okay, you got yeah. from 1776 to, to 87 is when the Constitution signed. Like that's what they should that's celebrate is that day. Well, they probably sh do, do, but that... Well, that's, that's other, almost, that's eight uh, years yeah. of like what was going on during those eight years. That's a long time. <laughs> Do you think there were people back then who their whole lives wasn't the Revolutionary War? They were oh. trying to have a life <laughs> yeah. and they were like, of course. we're not all about this war. Yeah, things are fine. I like, have a family I'm trying to work out. Of I'm course. trying to change my, how my house is and yeah. my farm and like, <laughs> I can't get involved with politics. Yeah, I, I guess don't there's a Revolutionary know. War. Yeah. Who's in charge? Well, there just, were the... Who do I pay my taxes <laughs> who's, who's to? I don't, just, I don't care. Tell me who sh I should pay <laughs> yeah. my taxes to. Great. Congratulations. All right. Great. You guys yeah. won? <laughs> what great. am I now? Am I American? Okay, good. Great, great. Good. <laughs> Where's my money? There were the, there were the few the several million you know enslaved people too. I wonder. I always wonder what they were uh, what they had to say about that whole. Frederick Douglass had a great quote about basically how like it was specifically about the Fourth of July, and he basically said like you're bringing. I'm paraphrasing, but he's like you're bringing us in chains into this great palace of democracy, and it's just like this really cruel uh, expectation that we're supposed to like you know as excited as, about it, as yeah. black people who are yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the whole narrative. I mean, if you talk about the constitution, I mean, that was just a bunch of landowning, basically oligarchic aristocrats. And they wanted to create a world where only white landowning male, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying anything, I guess probably most people don't know, but Fred I mean, just really that. interrogating yes. that narrative, I think is, is important people for people, people who to do. All people that constitution, I don't know what they look like. So I can't, <laughs> you can't I don't know what, them? no, I don't know what race they were. I don't know what <laughs> nationality. Oh, they were. You didn't know what race the vegan. founding fathers were. No, I'm. I look at names. I just look at names. <laughs> Red's colorblind. Yeah, just names. There were yeah, some. There was. A, there were a few Asians in that group, right? Asian uh, more Asian than, Americans. More than, more than a few. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin doesn't sound there, very smart, by the way. He's flying a kite in the storm. With stop the, it. Putting yeah, a, a key on stop there. That. <laughs> Grade dumbass. A dummy. Dumbass. Grade A dummy. <laughs> Also, yeah, he just I bet he wouldn't oh. have been very careful with fireworks either. No. Right. Um, also, he's just trying there to come was, up with there sayings was a all day. Iroquois, um, <laughs> can you imagine? That, Dude should have just worked for job. Hallmark. He's like, uh, write this down. Um, uh, an apple a day. He should have just Why? Wrote, written for Hallmark <laughs> or something. A card greeting, gr greeting card yeah. guy. Benjamin. Um, but the, the Iroquois also had like, like, the, like John Rutledge, who was from South Carolina and very big on slavery, by the way. Um, would just sit in the Constitutional Convention and read like long screeds of uh, Iroquois uh, ideological information because they had this really advanced democracy in the Iroquois Confederacy. And this is the kind of stuff like we don't learn. I didn't learn about this stuff in school, you know. Um, oh, interesting. But the Iroquois so, had this really egalitarian society. So you're saying some of the con some of the framework, the con mm -hmm. the concepts of the, the of the government of the Constitution come from uh, Iroquois. Uh, structure. A ton of it does. Yeah. And, and this and this guy, the eagle, like a lot of the symbols they used came from the Iroquois and from other uh, was indigenous that American groups as that well. was like, uh, we don't have any connection to Native American culture or something a couple months ago. Who was that guy? Uh, not Tom Cotton, I'm, but I'm, the, Paul Walker. No, not Paul Walker. Uh, Scott Walker. Oh, from he, he was yeah. saying how like, we don't have, like there was no culture here when the white man arrived. There's no <laughs> culture here. We brought it with us. They um, have to. That's part of the ideology. They have. They have to make you believe that because otherwise, it's just too dark. Like we, we literally committed committed like mass genocide and continue to do so to this day. I mean, like with COVID, you know, going back to COVID, uh, Indigenous Americans are dying at twice the rate as white Americans. You know, and it's like there's just this like all these things are kind of connected and linked together. And then we have Charlie Kirk. The great Charlie Kirk was saying that like. We don't need Juneteenth because we have July Fourth, and that's for everybody, mm -hmm. you know. And um, it's 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 all it's that's that's again the ideology 
that we don't think we have. You know, it, it, to me, like, because I, you know, here in Vietnam, there's everybody's talking about, you know, everybody likes to talk about how in communist socialist countries, everyone's brainwashed. But I mean, I think there's n the, the worst kind of brainwashing is when you don't even realize you've been brainwashed. Like that to me is a sign of um, deep indoctrination. Yeah. And I didn't realize that I was indoctrinated until I was in my 30s, you know, so. Um, um, I think let me ask you one more question unusual. here. Um, sure. You talk, the parent, you have a series about uh, anarchy and how it would actually work. First of all, how can people watch that? Because it sounds a very like a complicated thing to go through. But like, well, I use Legos, so it's it should be pretty simple for <laughs> anyone to understand it. You know, we have lots of visuals. Um, I mean, basically, it's really just it's not actually that complicated at all. I mean, anarchism at the core of it is just a, is just a uh, skepticism of hierarchy. That's it. So it's just like for us, hierarchies have to kind of prove themselves to be justifiable, and if and if the society doesn't find them just justifiable, then we should dismantle them. That's that's the core idea of anarchism. Now, within that, there are lots of different strains. I mean, black anarchism exists, indigenous anarchism exists. They have their own unique kind of foundations and 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 uh, principles. But uh, but that's the basic like principle that, that that unites it all together is that people shouldn't be able to coerce other people into doing things against their will. Who are some um, uh, Who are some famous anarchists? Because I like in my mind, like I picture people in black block or like scary people like come to mind you know what I mean? yeah like, I think well that's there, like... so if you go back there was kropotkin was uh was probably one of the, the, the you know probably the first uh anarcho-communist um that really made the school of anarchism that i follow um and there's rudolf rocker who was an anarcho syndicalist but then most of the anarchists that really mattered you'll never have heard about because they were like militant union organizers back in the 1900s who were like you know, getting murdered by the the police and, um, you know, people who were fighting. The reason you have an eight-hour workday, or we used to have an eight-hour workday, that's kind of going away now, but um, the reason we had an eight-hour workday was because of anarchists and socialists who were, you know, fighting and literally dying for that right. Um, you know, most of the anarchists in the world who have, who have really made impact are people you would never have heard of because they were just part of the group, part of the collective that was, you know, fighting for rights that we kind of take for granted today and don't realize we had to work really hard and fight really hard for those things as as a as a class. <laughs> I got to say so. one thing about Vietnam, they got a nice internet connection there. This guy's coming in <laughs> really good. strong. Yeah, really strong, seven bucks yeah. a month. <laughs> say what now? <clears throat> seven bucks a month for the high, uh, the top uh, top class. Check please. That sounds <laughs> plane ticket please. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, well, listen, EJ, I appreciate you coming on the show. Where can people find your channel? What's your what's the name of your channel? My channel is non-compete, and uh, I'll also pitch my wife. She's Vietnamese, and her channel is Luna Oi, L-U-N-A-O-I. She has a show about Vietnam uh, that you'll really appreciate if you want to learn more about a different culture from their internal perspective. So, I would yeah. take a trip over there, and you can show me around. Uh, that'd be awesome. I got I can show you some some cool stuff. All right, I'll go with you. How do you say I'm having a pretty good day in Vietnamese? Doi zat vui. So how is that it just again? really means I'm I'm happy. I'm very well. It actually just means I'm really happy. Doi zat vui. Doi zat vui. Doi zat vui. You got to go up. Zat. Doi zat. Very musical. Doi zat vui. Doi zat vui. All right. I'll Good. give you lessons. Just uh, drop me an email. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You remember that? Do you think you'll remember that at the end of the day? Yeah. Tim, we go there. Oh, you will. I remember Thank saying you, doi zat vui. Yeah. No, I'll probably forget. I will too. If we go there, Tim, I'll buy you a sandwich. It's on me. <laughs> Why are you? <laughs> it's on me. Life's one big joke, huh? What is the sound? The Blue Angels going. Oh. <laughs> I like how we didn't do City of the Day. I know to skip. Oh over. crap! <laughs> you know I need to do it because we have a big sponsor this week. Uh, you like that you didn't? Why don't you just chime in and put, put, put me in the right I mean, I'm letting path. it ride. Oh, yeah. <laughs> City of the Day is brought to you by Uncle Phil. Are you finding it harder and harder these days Whoa, to find a oh truth? I'm trying to get through it. You're going to watch the whole goddamn intro here. Are you finding it harder and harder these days to find a truly viral up-and-comer to follow on Twitter? Well, the search is over. Fast approaching 9,000 followers. Phil Braun has risen through the ranks with the speed and altitude of an eagle. Eh? Jump on board for Phil's trademark wit and wisdom and follow the man we know and love as Uncle Phil. The 10,000th follower will receive premiere passes to Phil's up-and-coming original movie, Yule Mule, the story of a recently divorced down-and-out mule who meets... What? Recently divorced down-and-out mule? 
who meets Santa Claus and learns the true meaning of Christmas. Ugh. Yule Mule hits theaters this December. What the hell is Yule Mule? <laughs> oh, he's, I see he's, he's promoting a movie. There, so Don't he's, he's got a miss movie. Yule Mule and follow Phil Braun today at, at play, play a Z ball on Twitter. That's Phil Braun. He paid us. Uh, should we say how much he paid us? Yeah. $5,000. <laughs> really? No. No. <laughs> Uh, the city of the day, uh, Honolulu, Hawaii. That's where Fred's from. That's right. More Honolulu, weather is Hawaii. mostly sunny. You still have a place there? Well, I'm, my family does. Mm -hmm. But we used to just go up and down Main Street right there. And <laughs> Main Street. Main Street. Got a Baskin Robbins right. and, you know, it's changed. Ice cream. It's changed so much. There's a Starbucks in every corner. Right. But when I was a kid, it was sushi. Sushi. Well, we had sushi back then. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just, like grew up like right in Waikiki. Right, right in Waikiki. Awesome. But um, we had rock bands and stuff, all that stuff. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> uh, Hermet, Hermeto Pas. How do you say his oh. last name? Oh, I got some of that guy. The plane to plane? No, the guy that like waxed his belly and, and like. <laughs> remember the the big big old guy. He played with Miles back. Davis. He played, yeah, he was like, like a jazz cat. Hermeto Pascal. That's it, Hermeto Pascal. Fred, do you believe in the uh, in the communicating with the afterlife, communicating with the dead, and all that business? Yeah, but like one way, like just talking to them. <laughs> You're not expecting any return. <laughs> no, I don't want like all the messages. I want to talk to them and just <laughs> le lecture them. <laughs> Imagine going to heaven and seeing all your grandparents oh and stuff. Oh, my God. Being like, oh, no. Oh, this is God. real. Hi. This is real. Hi. Hi. Oh, Timmy. Oh, Timmy. Oh, hey. oh, God. Oh. They're like, oh, we, like we've been wait, watching you wait, masturbating right. for, for your entire life. No. God, oh, yes. so many this family members. Isn't this great? You're gonna be, we're going to be together for eternity. Forever. Forever. Remember us? Like, ever. Barely remember you. Ever. <laughs> old school people who died. My old... Like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. We were so freaked out. This is your Aunt Arlene. This is your hi, mom's hi. Aunt, your great Aunt Arlene. Hi. She's here. Hi. <laughs> hi. Hi. Good to see you all. Can I put my bags down? I just want to rest. <laughs> There's so many people. Hi. Oh, hi. my oh, God. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's Holy been like, shit. Because I remember you when I was a kid, but... But I then yeah. I grew up to be an adult. This is Aunt Eleanor. Hi. Hi, Aunt Eleanor. Hi, I'm exhausted. Oh. Hey. So uh, how long well, have you been up well, here for? Oh, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, to, I guess I so. Guess. I mean, <laughs> you know, check all, in. You want to watch your nieces and nephews uh, live their lives and from, oh, from yeah. heaven? <laughs> sure, I guess. You want to float? Yeah. You could float around and, uh, and hover over people. They're doing real good down there. Wow. <laughs> it's a yacht, oh, look, a it's, yacht race. Oh, look, it's our Barney the cat. Remember Barney the cat? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was allergic. God. Oh, how exhausting. All that fake smiles. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Look at you. Uh, well, you get to see all of them, like thousands of great grandparents. Uh -huh. like, Wait, oh, you my know, God. Like you mean like ancestors? You mean like ones I don't know? Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. He's from the 1700s. Yeah. <laughs> and this is Rufus. <laughs> Hi. He was your great, great, great Hello. grandfather. Hello. I hope you like what I did down there. <laughs> I hope you liked it. I've been watching you. I lived in L.A., Los yeah. Angeles. It was on a comedy show. Big, big, big comedy show. Huge city. Yeah. <laughs> Does he speak English? Oh, he doesn't speak English. Um, I. Um, uh, 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 John Belushi. Yeah. Uh, uh, I. Not ready for uh, prime a theater. Time. Yeah. It's like a theater, theater. but. <laughs> Hold I on. Know Phil Braun saying. is here, uh, who paid for to be advertised. You want to talk to him real quick, Matt? Phil. Sure. Phil, Bring what is, on. first of all, <laughs> maybe you can explain that. Phil, what, what is this Yule Mule business you've been going on about now? Uh, it's a new movie that I'm currently starting production right now. Uh, i got the green screen up here behind me. We're um, very excited about this. going to be the hit movie of the Christmas season. All right, well, that's presumptuous. Yule Mule. And we what is the, the uh, mule? Is We're talking about a, a mule, an animal, not like a person that's carting drugs through the border or something like that. <laughs> yeah, regular, regular mule. Um, well, what, what, why you, you, de, you describe this mule as divorced. What's a divorced animal? What's that about? He, uh, well, it's kind of drawn some parallels to my own life, but he's kind of down and out. He's not really, Aww. um, uh, he got divorced. Um, he's, 
seeing a psychiatrist and he's just kind of out wandering around and he actually, uh, so the mule was married. Her. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's part of the story. Um, meets up with Santa Claus, uh, joins Santa Claus's team. Um, there's a lot of things that kind of happened during the, during the movie. We got John Travolta starring as, um, Santa. Great. We're very excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. He's a big star. Yeah, he's uh, he, he's the only um, the only human actor we've got. The rest are going to be uh, it's animals. A lot of animals in the movie. Oh, so it's not a cartoon. It's like you guys are actually using real animals. Correct. Uh, John's the only human, only speaking voice. Actually, we're not doing any <laughs> kind of CGI. We're not doing voiceovers. Um, I'm real excited about this. So wait, and, how do we get to know the? mule character if it's just a mule without any kind of voiceover or anything like that. Oh yeah. That's how little... do we know the mule that was married? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a Mr. Red kind of thing. I mean John's such a good actor, he's gonna be able to convey yeah, what the yeah. what the mule is communicating to him back to the audience. So there could be certain lines where John's kind of repeating back to the audience what's what the mule might be he's interpreting the mule saying to him. Mm. Wow, that sounds, that sounds rough. He needs some, that sounds he needs rough. Some help and uh, he'll, so he'll know that the mule told him that. And then uh, there's also kind of another subplot where there's kind of a big, uh, you know, Santa Claus and the, and the mule um, consider some of the farmers' subsidies. They're stealing money from the government, and the mule <laughs> becomes a spy. Um, he becomes a spy? The mule? <laughs> Yeah, the government is just like we're hiring this mule for a spy. <laughs> but none of this would be conveyed through any kind of voiceover, or or it's all. It sounds. I, well, it seems to be uh, cracking up Phil. It seems to be <laughs> funny to Phil. I'm excited about the movie. I mean, I just I can't wait till it comes out. And uh, well, you have to make it first, it. right? What you have Did to you... make it. You have to make sure it looks good and the yeah. sound is good and it's gonna look good. I got the green screen. So I, I know, but, but never, <laughs> never <laughs> underestimate the the quality of sound. Make yeah. sure the sound quality. But is also, good. green screen makes... doesn't. Yeah, mean it does. It... Green screen isn't a. It's gonna be great. It's not we, a recipe We don't, don't want to be dis... we don't want to be discouraging. We're just saying to really right make sure it all goes well. Do you have a mule? Do you have like the animal? Not yet. <laughs> You don't have the star of the movie. Well, there, I mean, mules are kind of a dime a dozen, though, right? <laughs> no. I, 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 I can't remember the last time I saw a mule. Yeah, I don't think about them as a dime a dozen. <laughs> I mean, goldfish, maybe. But... <laughs> right, goldfish, cats. <laughs> yeah. But a mule, you're going to have to, like, go to where the mule is. Mules aren't very mobile. When you does John be... start shooting? Most when mules are between 1,000 and 3,000. When does John Travolta start shooting? <laughs> are they really? Yeah. Wow, a mule! I want to buy a mule. Um, he's he's actually done some takes already. Some um, takes, and he, he's uh, sent sent them over, emailed them. Yeah, uh, he's doing this. It's his version of Santa Claus is going to blow your mind. Um, he's already doing a couple of different accents. Uh, he started out doing kind of like a Russian accent, and then some of the other shots he sent to me, he's already kind of converted over to a Brooklyn accent, which is... I, I, yeah, yeah, but then, is it going to track? Is, that, yeah. <laughs> is it going to track? What's, what's, As uh, you watch it, are you going to go, like, that's why... What, it... What's motivating that change in accent? <laughs> or are you, is he just giving you options? Well, my guess is just because Santa's kind of a man of the world. He's an international character. Sure. He knows all the different languages and yeah. accents, and that maybe that's what John was I deciding see that. to do. I mean... Um, to convey that he knows a lot of different things, a lot of different. So you're hoping to, for this to come out this year for, for Christmas? Yeah, it'll be out this year, 2021. Okay, so you're, it's, it's July. 25th. It's almost July now. When do right. you wrap shooting? Um, maybe maybe next week. Oh, um, oh you're moving <laughs> along. Well, you haven't gotten the mule yet? Well, Again, I mean, I get the mule. The mule will show up here on the green screen. We'll take yeah. a couple. All right. So this, this is also the only shot. Um, so it's going to be. Uh, That's John the only Travolta. shot in the film. <laughs> then it's going to be the mule. <laughs> back to John. Back to the mule. Oh God! The only, I don't even need them together to shoot this movie. That sounds great. I don't know. 
Yeah, you I don't know what to tell so, you. That, so, I mean, I'm being sarcastic. It sounds like... Why? No, I, like, I like your attitude, though. You seem optimistic, <laughs> and I, I, that's what I'm banking on, is your optimism. And you're so tickled by the whole thing. I know. So, you don't seem stressed. If yeah. I was making a movie that's coming out on Christmas, I'd be so stressed. It should be in the. I mean, frankly, it should be in the can by now. Like it should have. It should have <laughs> yeah. been. Be it like should have been ed- like it should be fully yeah. finished. Absolutely. And then you now could start promoting marketing. it. Yeah, marketing, marketing happened. It. And, uh, right. Yeah. I'd be stressed well, as hell. Brad, do you have any production companies that could help with the distribution for this? We not not distributors. No, no. I mean, oh. I mean, production I, I, companies wouldn't have anything to do with the distribution. It yeah. would be just about making it, and then you'd have a distribution company that will cut it out. But but the concept of a... Tim brought up a, like a drug mule before. That must be a horrible job. Yeah. Can you imagine? That's terrible. Probably pretty it's, bad. I'm, I may incorporate that my mule did, did in fact carry drugs at some point. Oh. I um, erroneously... Sure. Erroneously mule, yeah. muled... Uh, I had a little vape pen of marijuana in my backpack. I didn't realize it. I brought that right into Italy. You did? Absolutely. I had no idea. It's in my bag. So you're a drug mule. I'm an in- inadvertent. Did I say inadvertent? Yeah. I bet you in in that trade, it's all crooked people, right? Like whoever pays you and stuff. Oh, yeah. They're totally like, <laughs> these are bad guys. <laughs> I mean, well, you know they... what's good to do to those people? Threaten them. Give me my money. <laughs> oh, you're dead. <laughs> or I'm telling the police. Oh, turn the tables on them. <laughs> you idiot. Here's what I would do. I'd become a mule and then, yeah, and then blackmail him. Yeah. Oh, you want the drugs all of a sudden now? That's going to cost you twice the amount we talked about. You piece of shit. Now I'm at this motel. Good luck trying to find me. Where's, this is going to go one of two ways. Either you pay me twice the amount we agreed on or I'm calling the cops. How do you like that? Best way to do a mule is put it in the baby. You know what I mean? I'm writing all this down. Yeah. All right. Put Thanks, the, Phil. Put Good luck baby. to you. Uh, and so the, did the ad go well? Um, Fifty dollars? No. F- <laughs> how That's much? how much 50? you paid, Tim? You said we were getting a decimal point a little bit. Tim said it was five thousand. Yeah, yeah. five thousand. We talked about five thousand. We talked about five thousand. Very clear. Yeah. Why? When I got on the Venmo, I put in five zero zero zero. That's fifty dollars zero cents. <laughs> no. That's, that's five thousand. That's 000. all you get, Tim. <laughs> all right, Phil. That's good luck to, to you. All right, that's gonna hurt my budget. <laughs> I'm sure it will. <laughs> How much were you expecting to spend on the mule? The mule itself? Yeah. I figured they're just giving them out. No, no, no. no, 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 no. They... Doug, what was your price on the mule uh, you found? Typically between one and three thousand. About three thousand dollars. What an older mule? Even the older ones. They can't carry the sugar cane. The sugar they're cane stubborn. Around. They'll probably grab one on the way to the glue factory. Yeah, good luck negotiating with that mule, man. They're, they're stubborn. They're stubborn as hell. Stubborn. That's to own a mule for. That seems cheap. I mean, that's what I'm not saying. To, not to rent one. So you're saying even getting the mule to act might be tough. Yeah. Because of their nature. Wow. Oh yeah. I took one down the Grand Canyon because I had to get to the bottom. Why'd you have to go yeah. to the bottom? <laughs> because I was up on on the top. I know, but. What's wrong so, with being up top? But, uh, Did you have something down below? Slow, they're slow as hell. I dropped my wallet. You're just like this the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Ow. Well, I need this mule to get through these scenes fast, not slow. So that could be an issue. I'll, um, that's concerning. All right. Do you know uh, a mule is a half horse and half donkey? Mm-hmm. Yep, I did know that. They can't they reproduce. And it's the dot well, why don't you get yourself a horse and a donkey and make your own mule? Horses. <laughs> why don't you just get a donkey? All right. Uh, they're too small. Uh, if you're watching <laughs> us, if you're watching us on on the YouTube, and it's not live, we are now going to take a five minute break and come back for office hours after, after. hours. But you guys stay on the same stream. Uh, Fred, how are you doing on time? You gonna get out of here? I have a gonna... flight in. <laughs> 20 minutes. Out Thanks of where? Go. LAX. LAX? Are you gonna miss <laughs> 20 the flight? minutes. Are you going to miss the flight? <laughs> International. They're probably boarding now. <laughs> yeah, they're boarding now. Imagine. 20 minutes. Yeah. No, if I drive over. Uh, my daughter, Amelia, will be joining us in After Hours for a little check-in on her summer so far. Uh, you're welcome to stay, or if you want to get out of here, you can get out of here. I think people would love to have you around for another 20 minutes or so. 20 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> but, it, no, I, I have nowhere to go, okay. but uh, is that what it is? It's, it goes another 20 minutes? Yeah. We're going to check out a, D, a D, Divix uh, circuit. Oh, yeah. Divix you got to stick around tape. for this video. Sure. Okay. Awesome. okay. We'll be right back. I got a
I write just for you But others hearing this may find Things they would argue That's a good question I do not sing Beach what Boys I believe hip anymore. I only give them back If they believe quite a 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 Their concern, not mine, my friend. They're free to 